And we're back. Welcome back, movie lovers, to Matt's Movie Podcast. Today we're talking about a couple fantastic Hammer movies from the 1970s. We're talking about Dracula, A.D. 1972, and The Satanic Rites of Dracula. I'm here with one of my buddies today, and we are going to talk some Hammer Horror. I know you're a big Hammer Horror fan. Yeah, I, I guess I am, sort of. Uh, I'm not the hugest, I guess. I haven't seen everything, but uh, I, I like most of what I've seen. I've seen quite a bit. Um, and I think these two movies are really interesting because they come from that 70s period of Hammer where uh, they kind of they, they need, knew that they needed to have something to uh, sort of um, just kind of... Uh, just change things up because it was kind yeah. of becoming old fashioned a little a little stale a little stale yeah and so the 70s movies that they did there's they really just threw everything at the wall and just kind of tried to see what would stick right now i'm not very familiar with hammer but i do like a lot of what i've seen from hammer um i think the first film film i've seen from hammer was horror of dracula also called dracula over there in the uk yeah um, that one is absolutely fantastic. It's very bloody and gory and nothing at all like the Universal Dracula from the 1930s. Yeah. I think Hammer's is a lot more uh, compelling than the Universal one, even though the Universal is regarded as a classic. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. And it's, it's really interesting because, you know, you look at Horror of Dracula and that's so much more edgy than, like, the, the Universal Dracula movies. But once you get to 1972, 1973, when, when these two movies we watched today... Uh, were were made in, you know lo- the movies that were around then. Like it's really it's very cozy almost because you know 1973 The Exorcist came out and that's a big studio movie and that, yeah you know it's a, a lot more uh, it's a lot more intense than you know those movies are. So I think that they were kind of feeling that a little bit and they were trying to kind of um, just anything. And to, this to does that. have a lot of gore and a lot of messed up stuff but nothing like the exorcist no no i mean the and last movie we watched <laughs> uh, the, the satanic rites of dracula had freaking cultists in it and stuff like that yeah, but, but i mean it's not like uh, like a little girl like swearing and using like a crucifix to like yeah. masturbate and, and the thing is that's a big studio movie that that was put out by warner brothers i mean that's yeah not like and the, the independent stuff is even edgier oh so, yeah yeah so yeah i, I think part of what what they were trying to do with that is they're looking at like the 72 Dracula 80 1972 they're they're looking at okay uh Blackula came out 72 I, I right. don't know if that came out before or after but Count Yorga Vampire came out in 71 that set the vampire story in, in the modern day no I did see Blackula I haven't I didn't see uh Count Yorga yeah I mean it's it's is it kind of like the same kind of uh, feel like the like the very funky like uh... a, a little bit yeah it's 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 you know taking that vampire out of like the gothic period and just making it more contemporary yeah so See, that's one thing I really liked about um, Dracula 80, 1972, was that it's very funkadelic. It's, it has that music, it has that style, yeah. you have the whole whole opening. Well, once you get past like the prologue, you get that whole opening with a bunch of hippies just dancing around. Yeah. A bunch of sexy girls just dressed yeah. like hippies and everything like that. Yeah. Fantastic opening. Yeah, and I mean, I think, I, I mean, I wonder, it, it must have been a little bit influenced by that, but it was, you know, probably they're trying, with the hippies, they're trying to kind of you know get a new audience really yeah uh but yeah it's you know it has a great score it's um it has yeah a lot of that that 70s style and i, I think part of it is too just seeing you know london in the 70s oh and that yeah sort of swinging like 70s early 70s period yeah and 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 you don't really get dracula as like a traditional like 1970s guy he's pretty yeah. much still a dracula yeah he's not like a fish out of water type of scenario where it, where i thought it was going to be i thought it was dracula was going to be of like dealing with a whole bunch of like 1970s like cliche stuff like uh dealing with like getting high or whatever like yeah <laughs> or... yeah no it's 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 sort of interesting because they have like the the teenage characters that kind of deal with all of that stuff but they yeah. have they have um you know Peter Cushing as as a Van Helsing descendant, but he's basically just Van Helsing. And then you have Dracula, and that stuff is just like straight up, you know, classic Hammer horror type stuff. But they kind of put all, a lot of that onto like the teenage characters. 
Right, yeah. Which is an interesting way to approach it. And I think the teenage characters are actually really fantastic in that movie. They're yeah. all really, really good characters. I mean, the actors who play them are really, really good. I really like that one guy, uh, Christopher Niemey, yeah. however you say his name. That guy yeah. is really good. Um, he plays yeah, Johnny Alucard. And he's absolutely fantastic in that movie. Like, he is... He starts out just being, like, a normal, like, regular hippie dude. Yeah. And then he, like... There's this big scene where they bring to life Count Dracula, and then later, as the movie goes on, he actually becomes a vampire himself. So yeah. that's a really cool like transition for that character. But I think all the characters in that movie are really fun. Like, all of his friends, and um, we also get um, Caroline Monroe in this movie, too who's really, really sexy as all hell in this movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah, I mean... The only <laughs> a lot of the girls are really attractive in this movie, actually. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing about Carolyn Monroe, and it's it's really tragic, you know, they always have her in these movies, but she's, she's like, you know, uh, Abominable Dr. Fibes, this, uh, The Spy Who Loved Me, but she has such a small role, which is kind of yeah. sad. Yeah, she's a great actress yeah. from what we've seen of her, but yeah. we don't really get to see too much of her. She's very memorable, though, and like that 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 sa- whole sacrifice scene at the beginning of the movie with her, well, I mean, at the beginning, kind of beginning, uh, is, is really memorable and fantastic. Like, I've never seen any of her Sinbad stuff. I don't know if her roles are bigger in that. Like, what's her biggest role? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. I know I mean, she's, she's in that Sinbad in, she's stuff, in Star, too. She's in Star Crash. I've never seen Star Crash, but yeah. I think she probably has a bigger role in that. Uh, Sinbad. Uh, what Sinbad is she in? Uh, she's in a couple of them. Yeah, um, I, I think it's like those. The Voyage. Voyage of the... Um, what the hell is it called? Uh, it's the Golden Voyage? Golden yeah. Golden Voyage like, of Sinbad? Yeah, the Golden Voyage of Sinbad. I think she's in that one. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. She's great. Um... Christopher Name is great. Fantastic cast all around. Yeah. And, and then, of course, you have the two bigwigs from Hammer Horror. You yeah. have, um, you uh, know... Christopher Lee. Yeah, Christopher and, Lee and, 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 and uh, Cushing. And Freddie Cushing, And yeah. that's the first time uh, that they were back in a movie together, like a Dracula movie together since, uh, you know, all the way back in 1958 with Horror of Dracula. Really? Yeah. So this is the first time. So it's been like yeah. 20 years since this is a big, like, um... Yeah, yeah. It's a big deal because, yeah. you know, Horror of Dracula, it has both of them. But uh, then they go, the next one's Brides of Dracula, which, different vampire, but they have Van Helsing. They've been in other movies since yeah, then, yeah, but other... not together. Is that what you're trying to say? Well, not, well not, not in Dracula. Not in Dracula oh. movies. I mean, they've been in other movies together, just not the Dracula ones. Oh, okay. You know? And I think, you know... Peter... So this is like a, a direct sequel to Horror of Dracula. Well, I wouldn't say it's a direct sequel. It's just, you know, you have Peter Cushing as, you know, the Van Helsing character. You have uh, Christopher Lee as the Dracula character. And th- they have not both been in a movie together like that. I mean, a Dracula movie since Horror of Dracula in 58. Yeah. Because, you know, Brides of Dracula has just Peter Cushing as Van Helsing. And then Christopher Lee comes back in Dracula for all the other movies up to that point. But there's a different vampire killer, and it's not Christopher, or it's not Peter Cushing. So right, so yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's cool to actually bring them t- together because they have a lot of chemistry, you know. And right. I think, uh, I mean, there's some some of the other uh, vampire killer characters in uh, in the, the other Dracula movies are good. Like I like Father Sander from uh, Dracula: Prince of Darkness, but none of them are are, are Peter Cushing. You know, they don't yeah. have that chemistry. So it's it's really nice to see them. You know back in those roles don't you get peter cushing in the brides of dracula he's in brides but he's uh he, you don't have uh christopher lee in it oh he's not, okay because he's not um he's not dracula in that yeah movie. dracula i mean despite the title dracula is not in it it's a completely different vampire yeah movie. oh yeah, so. yeah 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 that's true so yeah but um i love that scene in uh dracula 80 1972 where they're having the whole bringing back dracula like that whole scene is really messed up there's like blood yeah, yeah. and sacrificing and yeah. all kinds of crazy shit going on yeah and, and the, the like that like you know when they have the the goblet with the ashes and the blood in it and then it gets yeah. really chunky and just overflows and it's pouring all over all over carolyn monroe yeah, yeah they got all that <laughs> blood pouring all over her and everything yeah, like that yeah. yeah yeah that's that's definitely one of the more memorable scenes of that oh movie. it's it's a fantastic yeah. scene yeah and then drac and then he brings dracula to life and he's like I brought you here. I brought you back. And he's like, 
it was my will. Like yeah. he won't like he won't let him have the credit for bringing him back. Yeah, like I like, <laughs> I like an asshole, man. I, I like that characterization though. Like he has that like noble like uh, a- aspect to him where he's just like everyone else is beneath them, you know. Yeah. I mean, even Van Helsing to a certain extent, you know, he kind of is like, well, you know. Right. So yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. Mhm. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff about <clears throat> There's a lot of great stuff about this movie. The opening, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love the opening. You, you get to see Dracula killed twice, and uh, yeah. both kills are excellent. Oh, yeah. Both kills are excellent. I mean, you're going to see Dracula get killed with a wagon wheel in this yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. And, I've never seen anything like that. I mean, you, I believe, like, a stake through the heart, you see yeah, that a bunch yeah. of times, but, like, actually using a wagon wheel yeah, as a stake oh, on accident. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, that is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then the other death. I mean, I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't seen it, but the other death is pretty good too. That you know, the one that closes it out. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's a great scene too. Yeah, and I mean jo- Johnny Alucard, he gets a good death scene, I think. I oh mean, yeah. It's just it's just funny <laughs> because uh, his his London his little London uh, pad is just absolutely the worst place for a vampire. To live. <laughs> it's almost comical a little yeah. bit. Because, uh, oh yeah. Because, you know, it's it's got a lot of places where light can get in, and, you know. Like, so. a spoiler, but, uh, yeah, he, um, well, this is a spoiler review, but I mean, the movie's been out for, like, what, 40 years? Yeah, I don't know. So if you haven't seen that. it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyways, he's like, he dies because he has this huge open window in his bathroom, and he has this curtain, and he pulls down the curtain, and the whole window is shining down light on him, and he's, like, frying himself, and he yeah. tur- he falls into the bathtub, and he turns on yeah. the water, yeah. so he's, like, drowning himself yeah. while he's frying himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and my he's God. Trying to, he's, he's just kind of stumbling around, and he pulls the, the like, skylight thing open and yeah that, and so he's like you know he's getting killed by the running water and the and, light and the light yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah so you know <laughs> oh yeah it's a crazy scene it is yeah yeah and he wants he wants to be a vampire because he's like oh oh i want the Im- or immortality I'll, I'll be better able to serve you as a vampire and it's like <laughs> Yeah, like, being a vampire isn't <laughs> isn't a crack, oh, it's cracked up to be. Well, yeah, and he's just he's not he's not and so he's good not immortal. He's not yeah. immortal because uh, I mean he just killed himself. It's it's, it's, it's yeah no it's funny because like if he wasn't a vampire he'd probably survive that. You know? Yeah, he'd, exactly. He'd be fighting like a senior citizen and uh, he could probably take him. You yeah, know? he wouldn't he wouldn't have to like you know avoid the sunlight or running water or any of that stuff. So it's, right. it's pretty funny that that happened so so quickly after that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But. And then, um... So the only other thing we need to discuss in this movie is, um, the fact that they figured out how... That Alucard is Dracula spelled backwards. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like in Troll 2, where that, uh, Nilbog is, like, Goblin spelled backwards. Yeah, it's... The, the whole... <laughs> I think the Troll whole... 2 stole from this movie. <laughs> well, the, the whole Alucard Dracula backwards thing comes from, um, Son of Dracula from, from the 40s. But, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that probably is, you know, the Troll 2 thing. It's probably, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're probably like, okay, well, we're going to do it with, but, you know, there's no Dracula, so we'll do Goblin. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, overall, what, did you, what would you rank this movie? Do you like this movie? I mean, do you uh, think, I, how, how would you rank this movie compared to, like, all the other, like, Hammer Horror movies oh, well, that you've seen? Uh, do you think this is, like, in the top half or the bottom half? I would say it's probably more towards the top. I think it's really kind of in the middle. Um, yeah. I mean, if we're talking all the, the Hammer Horror stuff, sort of towards the middle. As far as, like, the Dracula series in particular, um, it's probably towards the middle, I okay. would say. All right. You know, I yeah, mean, I, think... I like it. You're, you're more of a Hammer guy than me. I'm more of, like, a Universal guy. But, yeah. um, it's like, I've seen like, a couple of them, but I haven't seen too many. I've seen, like, Curse of uh, the Werewolf. I've seen yeah. Horror of Dracula. I've seen these two today. Yeah. And then I've seen Brides of Dracula and... Um, Horror, horror of Dracula. Horror, yeah, it's yeah. Horror of Dracula, but um, not a whole lot. So I needed to go out and see more Hammer Horror. Yeah. But I, I really enjoyed this movie. Um, I, I really, really like uh, Johnny Alucard. That guy yeah, is awesome. Yeah. yeah. And He's I really like Carolyn villain. Monroe in this movie, too. She's super yeah. hot, and mm-hmm. that scene where she to- is used in that ritual yeah. is so, like, over the top and disgusting. Like, when she's covered in all that junk and guts and everything. Yeah, yeah. And then... Peter Crushing and um, Christopher Lee are absolutely fantastic in this movie, too. I mean, yeah. this movie, 
overall, I actually really had a good time with it. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. I mean, some people kind of think that the whole, you know, the modern day stuff is a little cheesy, and I can see that, but yeah. I, I always think it's fun, you know? I but mean, I think they... They could have. I mean, it's actually more subdued than what they could have done with it. They could, yeah. That, they could have like, went completely over the top. Like it's not really a comedy. Like no. it's, it's 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 a little, it's a little goofy. Yeah. There there are some moments in here that are pretty ridiculous, especially with the hippies. But like, yeah. um, Dracula himself is still the stoic character. Like they don't mess with Dracula. He's pretty much uh, yeah, st- as stoic as ever. Yeah. And I mean, I think part of that might be Christopher Lee because he takes that role very seriously. And um, like, there's Dracula, Prince of Darkness. There's this, you know, thing where it's, it's, it's he famously he doesn't say any lines. And what Christopher Lee says is the reason he does, doesn't say those lines is because he thought the script was bad and he refused to say it. You know, he, it, you know, Dracula wouldn't say these things. Right. So, so I think part of that seriousness might come a little bit from him. Um, but you know, it's. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 it is interesting that it's all a little subdued, and I think it's probably a wise decision not to go too overboard with it, but... Yeah. All right, so let's move on to the sequel here, um, yeah. Satanic Satanic Rites of Dracula. Um, I Satanic Rites, uh, I like it a lot. It gets a lot of flack. It's probably one of the least popular Dracula movies, but I, I've always liked it because it, it tries a lot of new things. And, yeah, um, that's fair. I didn't like this one as much as yeah. uh, Dracula 1972. I, I agree with you. Um, this one's a little bit more talky. A lot, it is. A lot less it, action. There's a lot of plot, and there's, you know, I think they have a little bit of trouble getting all of that plot out. Yeah. Um, it's it's a really interesting plot, I think. I mean, it does it's, have some good ideas. I like, yeah. I like the idea with the cultists. Yeah. The fact that everybody is, like, uh, high members of society is kind of interesting. Yeah, it, it, it kind of, it's sort, it's a really great, like, if you're a conspiracy theorist, it's a really great movie. Because it's, it's, it's basically yeah. about, uh, you know, the government, uh, you know, high-ranking government officials are, are using, you know, black rit- mass rituals and, and all, uh, all this occult stuff to get ahead. Right. I mean, if, if you're a conspiracy theorist, you, you're, you know, you probably already believe that. So it's it's really th- interesting from that perspective. But I think they could have done but, it better. Yeah, no. Like, I, I, think, I think if we were introduced to this world and to these people without knowing that they were in a cult and learning that they're in a cult, that would have been much more uh, powerful than just... Yeah, these people are big and powerful, and they're in this cult. And we'd start out with just a cult. If we find out, just like we're in this world, and we find out every high-ranking individual, anybody you respect or support, yeah. is in this freaking death cult, I think that would have been a lot more powerful than how they presented it here. Uh, I, I kind of agree a little bit, but I, I think that the opening is really strong uh, in and of itself. Where you, I mean, you have no idea what's going on. You see this guy, and there's this black mass ritual, but you also see this like high tech side of it, where there's all these alarms and stuff set to keep people out. Yeah. And then you see the guy try to escape, and then there's like this whole espionage angle. And I think you have to kind of you, you need at least one government official to be kind of outed as an occultist. Just I mean to the agency just so that you have a plot line for them to investigate. Right. But I, I agree that they could have done more with, um, you know, maybe revealing the other characters a little later. Yeah. And I think uh, part of it is part of the problem too, is, you know, this is a Dracula movie. It's in the title. Um, you know, he shows up early on in the movie, right. but it, they kind of treat him like a, uh, like it's a surprise that he's there. And I, I don't really fall for it. Yeah, like yeah. The, the, the whole. There's I mean, a, it's not a surprise when he's in the freaking title, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I mean, like even they try to portray him as, um, you know, he, he's the one of the the high ranking people is really Dracula, you know. But that that reveal, and they even have like when when Peter Cushing confronts him, you know, he's got a light shining uh, at Peter Cushing, so you know he's kind of in silhouette. But yeah. it, it, which doesn't work on Blu-ray because you can tell it's Christopher Lee. <laughs> right. But but um. That, that whole reveal doesn't really work because it's like, okay, well, Dracula fits into this somehow. Yeah, exactly. And, so, And then who else is going to be playing Dracula but Christopher Lee? Well, uh, you, <laughs> well, the next movie, it's not Christopher Lee, so... Really? They have other people playing Dracula in, uh, in Hammer? In, yeah, well, in the last movie, uh, Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. So it's, this is like, the f- that's the fourth movie of the Dracula series? Oh. Because we have that No, or... no, it's, it's like the seventh or the eighth. Oh, wow. So like the, the, there's, there's these four, three really, these three these like three movies are related, right? Well, uh, horror, horror of Dracula. It's, and horror Dracula horror isn't 72. really related. It's just um, you know, it's just you have Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. 
I okay. mean, it's it's related in that. I mean, it's Dracula, but it's not like tied in really. I mean, most of those movies, I don't think they have very strict continuity. I wouldn't say. Yeah. I mean, you might get some some things where it's like uh, there's a couple of them where you know Dracula dies in the previous movie, and then they show like him being resurrected, and they kind of reference a little bit like the the previous movie, but like a lot of the times, it's completely different characters and, and settings, and uh, you know, all of that. Yeah. So it's 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 more like it's just a sequel because it's you know it's another movie with Dracula in it. Right. Right. But yeah. Uh, but speaking of Legend of the the Seven Golden Vampires, you know, one of the things I really like about this is it's it's really a mashup movie, and I think part of what Hammer was trying to do to kind of stay relevant in the '70s was just mash up with other genres, and uh, this one mashes the spy genre. With, yes. with horror and that's very that's pretty cool because you've never seen anything like that before I've never seen anything like it yeah and it's it's a really interesting idea maybe yeah. not maybe not executed you know as well as it could have been but yeah. the idea is fascinating and I, it I, is a very cool I, idea I would love to see other stuff where it's like you have a spy agency like, yeah, a, J- like, a, like a vampire James Bond movie yeah yeah <laughs> pretty much like like if you have a James Bond movie and the leading villain is like a vampire Stryker. or like a head yeah. of the occult yeah, or something yeah. like that, <laughs> that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, legend. I mean, I know you haven't seen Legends of the Seven Golden Vampires, but that's similar because that mixes like the the. It's like kung fu, isn't it? Yeah, it mixes kung fu with the traditional like hammer horror style. The only problem with that movie is you don't get Christopher Lee. You do get yeah. Peter Cushing, but not Christopher Lee. So then but, this is like this is like to- later towards the end of like. Uh, hammer, hammer yeah yeah so this is when they're trying to be like more outside the box more creative than yeah they're I, I, I mean do. there's there's really two ways to look at the 70s output of hammer it's the the first way is you know uh th- they're, they're losing their identity yeah, well yeah they're losing their identity they're they're not relevant anymore and they're all washed up or you can look at it as you know this is they're doing really interesting things. It's like their experiment, experimental phase. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, there's other movies that are like that too, besides just, you know, these two. I mean, there's like, uh, doc, uh, what's it called? Uh, Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde. That's yeah. an interesting concept. You know, a guy turns into a, <laughs> turns into a woman when he takes <laughs> the Dr. Jekyll potion. Uh, Captain yeah. Chronos, Vampire Hunter, which is kind of a little weird sort of vampire hunter type uh, thing and it's it has some interesting ideas with vampires and more action it's it's kind of along the lines of, of legend of the seven golden vampires but you know not kung fu yeah uh you know that movie i gotta too. check these out yeah yeah there's a lot of really interesting stuff in they the just 70s do all kinds and, of crazy stuff they just yeah. like throw like darts at the dartboard and see what sticks yeah and i mean it doesn't always work and, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work like i thought like dracula ad 1972 was awesome and i yeah. didn't really care for uh satanic, satanic rites, rites. Or dracula yeah i mean satanic rites is probably one of the least popular uh, dracula movies it does I have did. a great idea and it it's does. a great concept but i don't think it was executed that well it, it could have been executed better but I, you know i think it's fun enough i like that it it doesn't go too goofy with it it, it, it is a little serious and there's some really great stuff like the whole I think all the stuff that takes place in that um, old white house that they're using for the rituals, I think all that stuff is great where they're trying to infiltrate it and they, they got the, the basement full of vampires, which, by the way, is, is full full of stuff that, you know, is, is lethal to vampires. So it's just a bunch oh, of wooden yeah. stuff in there. <laughs> yeah. but, but the whole, the concept is really creepy, you know, of all these, like, vampire brides being chained up there in the, the basement. Oh, talking about wooden stuff that's lethal to the vampires, let's go back to Dracula 1972 for a second because we have that Home Alone um, trap, <laughs> well, and that yeah, is that's, that's, uh, a, that's a fantastic yeah. ending. Yeah. Uh, that's the ending you want, didn't well, want to say because it's yeah, like, a spoiler. Spoil it, but yeah. but yeah. Yeah, screw it, let's talk about yeah. it. That, that scene is so good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's um yeah, and he, he kind of like leads him there, then th- throws holy water on him, and then he falls. Yeah, right and, the then and then and he has this like <laughs> giant pit filled yeah. with like spikes, and it's like like wooden spikes. It's like one of those has to hit the heart. You know? yeah. <laughs> you know? It's such a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I really like that movie. That movie's a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I like what um what they did with a lot of the hammer stuff I, I think is that they find really good ways to kill dracula i mean personally yeah like, I, I love there's this little bit in horror of dracula that i really love where um you know they go down to the basement they're, they're like trying to find out where, where dracula is he's in the basement and uh but you know he's not there it's night he's not there so van they go run off and then van helsing does like a double take and he throws a cross into the the coffin so you know once dracula comes back to go to sleep well he can't <laughs> yeah. you know? it's just i love that little touch 
Yeah. And, and oh, yeah. stuff like that. And you get a, you kind of get a little bit of that. I remember that scene. Yeah, that's yeah. a fantastic scene. Yeah. Like, he's, like, stuck. He can't... And that, that's how they kill him, because he yeah, can't go he, back into the coffin, and then the sunlight comes out, and and he, he's screwed. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah. <laughs> Man, I really want to watch Horror Dracula again <laughs> now. That's such a good movie. Yeah, you, the one... I think my favorite is probably Prince of Darkness. Yeah. So I think I, I I mean you've seen the the ones before that like that's the next one you got to see. Yeah, Prince of Darkness. Uh, I got to check that one out. I, I like that one because uh, he's got this great manservant that is absolutely creepy in it. Um, really? Yeah, and it, it, it sort of almost feels a little bit like a slasher movie. Yeah. With um, you know, you have the the the. I guess they're not teens, but like you know, you have a couple that's going on vacation uh, up up in the wilderness, and they go to the town, and then they meet the superstitious like people, and they they're basically saying, ah, don't go up there, and then <laughs> yeah. they go up there, and bad things happen. That's awesome. So it's yeah. like a Jason Voorhees vampire. It, it feels it feels a little <laughs> bit like like a Jason movie to me. That's which is, cool. Uh, interesting, I like that. but yeah. yeah. Because you never see that as a vampire movie either. Is, that yeah, the, the, is this in the seventies too? No, that's, that's in the sixties. It's not. It's not really. It, it, I mean, it's not. It, it still feels like traditional Hammer horror. It's just, yeah. I, I don't know. It's just something about the way it's the setup. It's just like I can kind of transpose that in, into modern times. It basically seems like a slasher movie to me. So, do you think that Dracula in AD nineteen seventy two was the first one to go into their experimental phase? Uh, nah, I don't think it would, because I think I think Doctor Jekyll and Sister Hyde is from seventy one. Is that came before that? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's, and to be fair, they do experiment a little bit in the sixties. Like they have that whole line of like black and white, uh, like Hitchcock style thrillers. Oh which, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of a departure from from what they were normally doing. Which in is the basically 60s. just Dracula and Frankenstein. And then the well, Mummy. I think the, their Mummy movies the mummy, are pretty good too. They have a mum. Yeah, well, they have a, a great Mummy movie. Is it just 59. one? One. Mummy they have movie a couple have? other other Mummy movies. I've uh, there's what is it called? It's from '64. I can't think of the title right now. I've seen that one. That one's okay, but you know the '59 one's great. Okay, yeah. So and they have a couple other ones I think besides those two. Yeah. So. But yeah, the back in the '50s, and back in the '50s and early '60s, it was basically just Dracula and Frankenstein. They had a one Wolfman movie. They that's, had that's in the sixties. Yeah, yeah, that was in the like with the mid sixties, early sixties. Yeah, yeah, but mostly in the fifties and sixties, I mean, it was just like Fra- Dracula and Frankenstein. Yeah, I mean, but they they did other like um, you know other gothic style horror movies. You know, with not necessarily with Dracula, Frankenstein. You know, just but kind of like one off things. Like there's uh, they did a zombie movie called Plague of the Zombies in in the mid sixties. They did. Uh, uh, there's a couple occult stuff like there's a um, the devil rides out uh, the witches um, they did uh, the reptile which is their own original monster uh, you know they do other stuff like that but it all kind of has a similar feel to it now do you think uh, hammer died out in the 70s like the mid 70s or what do you think when was the last yeah, it's, hammer movie uh, I don't know when the last is. It's probably, what, late 70s, early 80s? Because you said they switched to a new studio, which is still called Hammer, and they still make horror, but it's not, like, the Hammer that we're used to. Well, there's a new studio now, a new Hammer studio. I think they put out um, The Woman in Black from from 2012. Yeah. uh, And some other movies. It's not uh, not any of the same people involved. It's, you know, it's just... It's just the same name? Well, I mean, it's it's like, I I think someone bought it. Okay. And then they're kind of, you know, I mean, you know, it's it's known for horror, you know, so they, yeah, they but it doesn't it. have the same feel as like the Hammer stuff. No, that I wouldn't used say to. that it is. I mean, there's not, it, it's not gothic horror, you know. It's right. Real, I mean, overall, it's you know. So you think it ended in like the late seventies? Like? Yeah, I mean, it, it 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 the thing about Hammer is, you know, I think that it ended for two reasons. Um, the first is they had a distribution deal with Warner Brothers to get their movies out in. Um, out in the states, but the thing about that is, you know, seventy three. You know, Warner Brothers put out The Exorcist. Like they didn't really need to yeah. go uh, do that. And and the second thing is, I think the product was, you know, kind of looked at as being maybe a little outdated uh, by that time because you know, yeah. you know, we go go to Horror of Dracula in fifty eight. It's really shocking compared to like the other Gothic horror movies that before right. that. Or, or Curse of Frankenstein, because you have, uh, you know, women running around with, uh, you know, these plunging necklines, and you, yeah. have, you have, you know, Christopher Lee chasing someone and down. lots and of fighting, blood. Fight. Yeah, lots, lots of, of blood. blood. Yeah, but, I mean, it's not, 
you know, you didn't have, like, a bunch of nudity. You didn't have, like, it's not, it's blood, but it's not, like, gore. It's not really gruesome. It's Right, like, it's just, and I love their blood and hammer, because it's always yeah, so, so bright. bright. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So, do you think that, um, this whole, like, classic, gothic idea could make a comeback? Like... Uh, I wish it would. I, I don't, I mean... I think if someone got the the idea to do it, maybe they could be successful. I think part of the reason is probably it's expensive, just because of the the period setting. Yeah, you know? the period piece. Yeah, but I wish they would. I mean, it's... and I mean they've done period horror movies like The Witch yeah. and stuff like that, but it's not the same kind of feel. Yeah, I mean, the... it's, it's not fun. It's yeah. just, which, the witch is very serious. Yeah, like I guess, um, like I think Christopher Lee, the way he described his the, those movies were that they were kind of like a dark fantasy. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's it's really, it's not really about, like, revulsion or anything like that. It's it's just kind of fun. I mean, okay, there's some sort of, like, spooky stuff maybe, but it's not, you know, it's not out to, like, disgust you. or And I don't think it'd be, I yeah. mean, even back then it probably didn't keep people up at night, I don't think. No, I mean, it is know? more dark fantasy. Yeah. That is a very good way to describe it. Because, I mean, it's not like other movies that were happening around the 70s and 80s and even today, like, yeah. with all the jump scares and everything. You don't get those kind of jump scares and all that. No. Mm-hmm. I mean, you really don't. It's more about just the horror imagery on screen there. Yeah. And it's not even that disgusting either. I mean, it's all pretty tame. Yeah, it is really tame. I mean, yeah, I mean, like like I said, though. I, I mean, mean, even even that, uh, that ritual, that's probably as gross as uh, yeah. Hammer gets. Well, the thing about that ritual, too, is, like, you know, in in um, Satanic Rites of Dracula, there's nudity in that ritual. Yeah, and, that's and, true. And they are trying to kind of push the envelope, but even still, it's still kind of tame compared to what else was out there. I mean, like right. I said... Yeah, like they said, plunge, actually, like, knives into people, yeah, and, like, yeah. uh, there's, like, uh, like, human sacrifice, and, like, all kinds of stuff like yeah. that. But still, it's, it's very tame compared to, like, um, when, like... I think it's more early '80s, like uh, stuff like Cannibal Holocaust, which I think that's yeah. like, was that late '70s, early '80s. But that was '80, yeah, 1980, Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, I mean compared to something yeah, like that, but I that's mean, way over the top. But like something more like subdued, like uh, Exorcist. Even that's more over the yeah, top I mean, than but, this Hammer but stuff. The, the Exorcist is a studio movie, you know. I mean, like yeah. the independent stuff is going to be like even like I mean, the, like Exorcist is a mainstream movie in 1973, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah, and that's that's so much more like you know than, than the Hammer stuff. I mean, there's a a, a documentary on it called uh, uh, Hammer Horror: The Warner Years, and they kind of talk about this a little bit because you know one of the things that, I forget who says it, but one of the things that one of the critics in, in, that they're interviewing says is you know Warner pulled out of the deal and. You know, the, the Exorcist is, uh, you know, a mainstream horror movie by that point, and you know, it's just, it comes off as a little cozy and yeah. old fashioned. But I mean, it's fun, and uh, I, there's, you know, it's really the only genre I think of, of horror that hasn't really seen a resurgence. I mean, every everything else you can kind of get in, in the modern day. It's just like gothic yeah. horror. There's... Yeah, that's it. I mean, you don't really get any gothic horror anymore. Yeah. Um, they tried to bring some of the gothic characters back like yeah, the mummy but, but that was that was terrible well and, and they, they tried to make that dark universe but that was that was a complete train wreck yeah well they they try to make them very contemporary though it's like they, they kind of like you know the um well i guess you have the mummy re- remake in night in the 90s uh, yeah period piece and all i that, think but, that is when they should it. have tried to redo it well they, they kind of did it's just i don't think anything really took because yeah, they really had Van Helsing in the early two thousands. Yeah, well, that was the same director as a, as the Mummy. Is but, it really? Yeah, yeah, but that didn't really work. I don't know. It's just it, the big studio stuff. It's like I don't know. It just doesn't work when they do it. I think yeah. maybe maybe if they had if someone did like a low budget, sort of, I don't know. Yeah, because yeah, I mean the budget on Dracula and Frankenstein, it was like back in the 30s, it was the actors who really sold it and it was the settings that sold it. Everything else, it was all atmosphere. I mean, it wasn't. Yeah, it is a lot it, of atmosphere. It wasn't a very expensive production. I mean, all you well, need. I mean, was it really? Well, I mean, for, well, maybe it was, it was, it was a, a bit more expensive. It was for, big budget horror. I mean, it was Universal Studios putting it out. Yeah, it but I mean. I mean, but I mean, for, the they setting, they kind of went cheap on a lot of stuff because, like, um, 
the castles for Dracula are like very impressive, but I read that somewhere that the castle, the image of the castle, was just a painting on oh, the background. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have to get someone to to do the painting, though. That's the thing. Yeah, true. You know, I mean, that, even that costs money. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's cheap. I mean, well, that and you know, there's there's not a whole lot of castles in America, too. Yeah, that's <laughs> this, true. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, yeah, it, it's it's probably harder to make one in, in America than in like Britain. Yeah. So. It would be so great to have a, re- a revival of, like, classic, yeah, like, horror like, like that, just, though. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And you're right about, you know, those actors. There's really not... I mean, you, there's, there's like, horror stars, but they're not really, like, uh, you know, Christopher Lee or, or Peter Cushing or Peter... Or, uh, Vincent Price, yeah, of course, yeah. for those guys. I don't know. It's something. Yeah, like who that. do you have now that's a big horror actor? I mean, like, I can't even think of anybody. Who would you have? I mean, I guess you have like Bruce Campbell, Robert England, but I don't think it's quite. Yeah, but even insane. that's from like the nineties and yeah, early that's true. 2000s. You're right. You're right. Yeah, who are. do you have now? You got the guy from The Conjuring. Well, I mean, he's not really a horror actor, though. I wouldn't say. Yeah, I so, mean, he's he's been in the what the Conjuring movies, Insidious. I mean, he's, he's more like a, just a normal actor. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, he was even an Aquaman. Yeah, yeah. So who, I mean, like, even guys, even the people from Scream, that was 2000s. Like, you don't yeah, have any... Was, well, yeah, I don't know. It's 90s people, like, ho- ha- horror movie actors from the 2010s, they don't exist. Like, yeah, there's not really... they put out a ton of horror. I mean, this year alone, they probably put out, like, 20, 30 horror films. Yeah, I mean... But that's... none of them are, like, iconic horror. Yeah, actually, it's it's um, every decade. I haven't checked for this decade, but every decade except for the '90s, the amount of horror movies increases that that are produced, at least according to IMDb. Yeah. So yeah, there's probably a ton. I've probably seen like about like maybe twenty, thirty horror movies this year alone, yeah. and they're always putting out new ones. They just put yeah. out a new one yeah. on Netflix. Yeah, they're always yeah. I mean, it's cheap. It's a cheap genre. There's a big fan base. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. But you don't have the classic icons like you did back in, yeah. like... Each era had their own classic icons. You had uh, Bela Lugosi, Boris Karloff from, like, the 30s yeah. and 40s. Yeah. Then you got Vincent Price. And you also had um, Christopher Lee and Peter Crushing. Yeah. And then later on, then you had um, Robert England. Yeah, yeah. Kane Hodder. Kane Bruce Hodder, Campbell, yeah. Guys. Bruce yeah. Campbell. And that's kind of the end of it. I mean, it after does, that, uh, it does, like, yeah. who do you have? Yeah. Maybe the guys from Scream, like Courtney well, Cox and David, David Arquette. I wouldn't say they're horror icons. They, I mean, it's really, they've done Scream. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They don't really have anybody. Well, like, Robert Engel has only done, like, Nightmare on Elm Street. No, he hasn't. He's done plenty of other stuff <laughs> besides that. He's done plenty of other stuff. Oh, yeah, he did his own Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. The, I want to yeah, see that. Phantom, yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's pretty interesting. Uh, I like that it... I like that it's a, a it takes it like seriously as a horror concept. Like you know, the, the problem I have with a lot of fan of the of the opera stuff is it just like they cut the horror element out. It's more based on the music than the horror. Yeah, and I don't. I mean, the original story is a, a horror story. Yeah, you know? I mean, the, it was the a silent part, film, so there wasn't the, that much music to begin well, with. I mean, I mean there was the other pianist. Based, well, it's based on the, on the book, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, it's that that forty three version that I think. I don't know. Oh, I hate that 43 version. <laughs> yeah. It's I mean, colorful, but it, it, it's like It looks so nice, but yeah, it's like, yeah. I think that's what killed the Phantom of the Opera all the way back in 43. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't really get, like, you know, a bunch of Phantom movies the way you did, like, Frankenstein or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, for, when was the last, like, Frankenstein movie we had? I think we they had, they put out something. I know they put they out they a put recent, out. like, Wolfman movie. Yeah. That was yeah. in the 2010s. Yeah. Uh, Frankenstein. There was an I Frankenstein. I've never seen it. But that was that was sometime in this decade. Yeah. Um, and then they had like Dracula Untold or Unbound or, or something. Yeah. And that, that was that was another one of those things where they're trying to like set up this dark universe, the whole universal monster yeah. stuff. And they keep I, trying to do it. It just doesn't work anymore. It and doesn't. I don't know why. I think it's just not as well, fun as it well, used I to think, be. Well, I think part of it is like with the, the, the universal stuff, they... They really try to. I don't know. I, I think they don't understand the audience. Like they they're not going for like anything kind of like those movies used to be. They're they're very modern. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, with the mummy, like that takes place what like in modern times. It's supposed to be set in like like Iraq or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I didn't see it. I, don't know. I haven't just, seen it either. But I heard it was a complete train wreck. Yeah. I mean, I think part of it is is yeah. They they just kind of don't really understand. And I think part of it is like the fan base is like. I don't even know if they want, because I mean, I, to be honest, I don't know how much I want like a new 
Frankenstein or Dracula because right. it, might, it might suck. Yeah, I mean, the, they've well, been trying to put them out, and they all have all been I mean, pretty bad. Of, yeah, there's a lot of, yeah. The last one I, like, enjoyed a little bit was Van Helsing, just because it, it was so over the top. It, it was is, a Monster yeah. Mash movie. Yeah. Yeah, I don't and know. And it was still pretty bad, let's it, be honest. Yeah, but yeah. It, was, it was it was mildly entertaining. Yeah. But anyways, uh, these two Hammer movies, I, I liked uh, Dracula 8, Dracula 80, 1972 yeah. a lot more than Satanic Rites of Dracula. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's not a bad movie, Satanic no, Rites. I mean, I, I, there is some entertaining stuff, but I think that Dracula AD has a lot more going for it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it functions a little better, I think, as a, like a, a co- cohesive whole, whereas, you know, it's Satanic Rites, there's a lot of good ideas and stuff that doesn't really gel fully. Yeah. Um, no, I, I agree with that. I think most people probably feel the same way because, you know, like I said, Satanic Rites is probably the least, least popular Hammer Dracula. Yeah. Dracula AD kind of splits people, but, uh, you know, I'm a fan. Yeah, I, <laughs> I like it too. It, it, it's a little goofy and over the top, but it's, it's, yeah. it, it's definitely entertaining. Yeah. I mean, well, now you got to see uh, Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. So yeah, see, that's the next one i got to check out. Like the Kung Fu Vampires. Yeah. And, well, you got to check out Dracula uh, Bright... Or, said rise of darkness prince of darkness oh yeah, yeah that i want to see that one too yeah because i think yeah because you've seen a lot of my other favorites which you know the the first two and and then legend i think yeah and then i probably put yeah prince of darkness and maybe dracula as as like that round up my top five dracula 80 1972 yeah for sure yeah all right. So, is there anything else you need to say about uh, either of these movies? No. Uh, no. I think I think we kind of covered them all. All so. right. Cool. That sounds good. Well, thank you guys for tuning in once again, and uh, keep on listening.